Good day, everybody. My name is JJ, and welcome to Perceptions of the Dead. This is a uh, story-driven game from Steam. It's free to play. And I have no idea how it works, what the story is, or anything about it. All I know is it's got fairly positive reviews, it's free, and we just passed Halloween, so I thought, yeah, why not play a kind of a spooky game? Let's see how it goes. So without further ado, let's jump into it and see what happens, shall we? So we've got Jill Count, the Phantom Ice Cream Truck, and Perceptions of the Dead. Um, well, I like ice cream. Let's go with that. Phantom Ice Cream Truck. Follow a denizen of the border between life and death as he answers a call to rescue a missing child. Yeah, okay. Do that. A phantom ice cream truck. Okay. A glance around reveals an empty street, and I take a moment of solitude to adjust my layers. It does a little to stay above the biting wind. I clench and unclench my fingers with a deep root. I am not being paid well enough for this shit. Then again, I never am. This was the second night since I had started this assignment. The couple had hired me to bring back their son. They hadn't been so comfortable with the way the official investigation was turning up so very little, and how much the media had begun to spin the tale into a ghost story. The Phantom Ice Cream Truck. Hey, I just said that. What a mouthful. Yeah. A messy case, too. The police's initial involvement had been straightforward. The first child had fell off the map like the earth had swallowed him whole. Right off the street, according to witnesses. No one saw a thing. No reliable witness heard anything either. No unfamiliar cars or people. No unfamiliar sounds. One moment he was in front of his parents' home, the next he was gone. Strange, but there could be plenty of explanations for such an incident. Very mundane ones. Squirrel! Such explanations became more unlikely when every child in the neighborhood reported hearing ice cream truck music right around the time of the disappearance. Well, that explains it then. Of course, without a single adult able to corroborate this mysterious music, the children's testimony was quickly dismissed. Mm. Still creepy, right? Definitely. And oh so mysterious. Ooh. Even more so when it happened again. Uh oh. Then a third time. Oh, damn. It was the third parents who hired me. I never really figured out how my clients find me. It's not like I list my number anywhere or advertise. Who is this guy? But somehow word of mouth leads to my phone ringing and a familiar phrase to indicate it's for business. Ya, ya, fatan. I seek a pact with that which should not be. Hmm. I know, it's a little trippy. It's from a book I had read back in college. A friend came up with the joke as his invocation of my aid. He must have used it dozens of times when we were younger. Typically for a ride when he had been out drinking. I had become so used to it that when I first answered the phone and heard an unfamiliar voice say the phrase, I just kind of went with it. The next time it was the same. And then it became... common. Uh huh. Where are you? We live in Rosterfield, Maine. I know it's a long way from where I heard about you, but... Can you help us? Will you pay the price? Uh-oh. We will pay anything if you can bring back our son. The deal is struck. And with that, I called in sick to work. I told them I had the flu and needed a few days off. I was given shit about not getting my flu shot, but they didn't hassle me too much. That evening, I was on a plane. Again, who is this guy? Alright, good intro. I arrived at the house at midnight. Of course. I arrived at the house at midnight. I heard you the first time. I did not knock. After all, it was important to keep up appearances. The window to the left was latched, but the right slid up easily. I found the boys' room first and gave it a once-over. Legos, Ben 10 toys, and Star Wars paraphernalia littered at the floors and walls. A quick once-over revealed nothing useful, though. I sat on the foot of the bed for almost 10 minutes before one of them stirred. Oh my god! Normal reaction. I turn around slowly. I return for what's lost. 
from you, I need two items. I need a photo and a photo of clothing. Something thick with this smell. Ew. The woman stands up slowly, edging against the wall, then runs to the child's room. She returns with a dirty soccer jersey and a copy of a lost flyer. The father remains paralyzed, his eyes locked with mine. Though likely, he is just staring into the shadow beneath my hood, hoping to see something there, something human. Likely questioning his decision to hire me. Who is this guy? Can you really find him? I take a long smell of the shirt, then discard it. Ugh. I take a look at the photo. This time, I spend a lot longer examining it. I wasn't really some bloodhound. I couldn't track my scent, but the photo helped a lot. Now I knew what he looked like. This guy's creepy. Yes. Thank you. She begins to breathe heavily, and then cries. The husband just continues to stare aghast into the hood of my coat. With that, I begin to walk out. Behind me, I hear the father speak. Oh, did we just send after our son? That's a damn good question. The first night had been uneventful. I had turned over the results of the police investigation and found myself wanting. Wanting what? Oh, anything resembling a lead. Did these people get paid to do this shit? I certainly didn't buy the superstitious who were already spreading stories about the ghostly ice cream truck. If a ghost were going to come back, it's very unlikely they would be scooting around in an ice cream truck. I don't know, I think that'd be awesome. Talking to children had been painfully hard. That's true. My one fortune was that my attire left me more reminiscent of a slender man than a child molester. <laughs> so the times I was chased away from children I tried to interview were not mistaken for solicitation. Well, that's something, I suppose. I shudder violently at the thought. Mm -hmm. The children provided my first real clue. They described a tune. One that sounded like the type and consistency that an ice cream truck might have. Not that ice cream trucks were common these days. I was a little surprised these kids even knew what one was. Some were even able to hum and whistle the tune for me. I wasn't entirely sure how to run with this info. The relevance of a single song really didn't occur to me. A small piece of the rest of the day was spent feeding myself and taking a nap as inconspicuously as possible. I had no intention of allowing anyone to see me be anything other than the creepy supernatural or paranormal investigator. Uh huh. That's how I've always done things. You'd be surprised how quickly you can build a rep with the right look and behavior. And try not to run into a cop. After the nap, it was back to beating the streets. And my crap began to return. It was friggin' cold! In the near distance, I watched a quartet of kids, roughly 14 or so, playing a ragged game of football. They seemed to be having a great time, but even as far away as I am, their cheers and jeers were on my nerves. For a moment, I wished they would be quiet. As though hearing my thoughts mid-run, they stop, on cue. They stand up straight and begin to draw heavy, ragged breaths. A girl hugs the football to her chest as her eyes go ever wider. I test reality for a moment. I wish I had a few thousand bitcoins. <laughs> it occurs to me that I should have asked for something more easily checked. At the same time, it occurs to me that I didn't silence those kids. I bite my tongue, close my eyes, and bury the nail of my thumb into the palm of my hand. I dig in as hard as I can, drawing blood as my vision flares with the colors behind my eyelids. And then, I hear it. The song playing on a pair of shitty speakers. The kind you'd hear on top of an old tiny ice cream truck. My eyes flick open as I scan the horizon. The truck passes me, inches from clipping my shoulder, and heading straight towards the kids. No you fucking don't! I break into a run, and despite the trivial speed of the truck, barely manage to keep up. As the truck closes on the kids, it slows to a stop, and I finally begin to close the gap. Run on home, you kids. It's getting dark. This town isn't safe after that. Getting dark? What is he talking about? The sun set hours ago. No sooner had the words crossed my mind when it all went black. For a few moments, I thought I had been knocked unconscious. Then my eyes began to adjust. I make out the faintest impression of light. Oh no. Oh no. This isn't good. You kids better get in. I'll get you home safe. Don't do it! I watch helplessly moving through the dark like it was molasses. Shadows pass before the light as he ushers them into the truck. 
The truck lights blare into brilliance, and I hear the motor roar as the car begins to move forward at a pace more in keeping with a motor vehicle. I would lose it even if I were still able to move. No! No! I let out a choked cry after them. Stop! Stop! Well, that was useful. Then I stop. The second cry had no depth to its volume. While the no had echoed normally down the empty street, the scream of stop had sounded like I screamed into the middle of a very crowded room. What does that even mean? Slowly I reach behind me, laying hands on one of my pieces of emergency equipment. The kind of stuff you don't use when you want people to think you're some manner of elder whore. I slowly bring it around, just as I feel the breath on my neck. With a whip, I crack the flare. Seeing it burn red hot through my clenched eyes, and I hear the cacophony of screams, I open them. You open the screams? Thousands of twisted naked heaps of malformed demi-human flesh writhe in the agony of the light. And as I raise it above my head, the flare burns bright. Holy crap. The darkness washes away. I wheel around in place, but find myself alone back in the street. In the middle of the day, I drop the flare and try futilely to snuff it out with my boot. My little display is drawn in audience, and not so far down the street, I see my clients. Oh, fuck. <laughs> that went well. So it's ghosts. I merely nod slowly. But you can still get him back? I nod again. But it's been over a week since you started searching. He hasn't eaten anything. I still couldn't wrap my mind around how much time had passed in the darkness. He will be fine. Time does not pass normally where he is. You know where he is? I nod. I'm going there tonight to get him back. They start crying. I'm not really sure what to do at this point, so I stand there, awkwardly. Hoping that my layers give me more of the appearance of stoicism than an awkward penguin. <laughs> Apparently it works. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Don't thank him yet. I leave the building as they both chant thank you. Like it was some kind of prayer. It's not the first time I'd heard that prayer. It's not the first time I had done this. I'm ready this time as night falls. I withdraw a small shot and without hesitation jam it into my arm. Excuse me? Viper venom. Oh. I had a friend back home who kept one as a pet. Weird kid. Milks the things. Sells the venom, mostly to medical facilities. Occasionally he sells it to me. My knees nearly buckle as the burning begins to creep through my arm. I stifle a scream. Then I hear it and everything clicks. I let out a long sigh and stand up, adjusting my layers. I turn my eyes to fall upon the approaching truck. My hand goes behind my back and my fingers close. I train the gun on the truck and unload a triad of shots into the ghost truck's engine. The engine sputters, the grating burns, melting away, and the music screams in protest. What? What do you think you're doing? An escapee from an Andy Warhol painting stutters, stepping awkwardly from the vehicle. It's getting dark. I have to protect the children. Only one thing may not exist. You and that which you fear must cease to be. But the children... The darkness falls upon me. With such force, I stagger. I lose my grip and the gun disappears, searing into the shifting mass of flesh. My hand goes behind my back, and my grip closes around a rough-hewn blade, forged of obsidian and steel. And as I carve outwards, I hear the screams of all the lost children unwilling to accept their fate, and swallowed by the darkness. Flesh tatters as I carve, burning away like paper, until finally, I lay into the man. No, you don't understand. I was just trying to help- I bury the blade into his throat. Yikes. The cacophony resounds as the children who lost themselves in the darkness writhe, and I go about my work of freeing them all, just as I had freed this man. Call that free? My baby. Oh, my baby. It's okay. Everyone's okay. No, not everyone. They're all dead. Everyone. Everyone died. 
Seven kids lost here. And I got back all of them. I wonder how many I actually freed. How many had he trapped in his nightmare? And what the hell was he so afraid of in that darkness? And most importantly, why did he ultimately abandon them to it? Good questions. I don't know how to thank you. After a week of not hearing from you, I'd feared for the worst. A month after that, and I'd come to accept that it was over. I was ready to move on. His eyes fall to his wife, still babying the boy, who won't stop staring off into the distance. She had faith, though. She said that you were an angel, or maybe a demon. She didn't care. She believed in you. Some nights after she had said her Hail Marys, I would see her put her hands together, and I would hear her. She prayed to you. I was almost flattered, but to tell the truth, the idea of someone believing so much in me, in praying to me, it was terrifying. I want you to know, I'm willing to pay more than whatever your normal fee is. We've been living with a tight belt since I called you, and I won't lie and say I don't do well for myself. I have more than enough saved up to pay you anything we could ask. Or, if there's something else you want, there's nothing I can offer you that means more to me than my son. I let out a long sigh. I reach up to my hood and pull it back. Both of them gasp, stepping back, and then cocking eyebrows in unison, having perhaps expected something more. After having been gone for two months, I could really use a job. Well, that was interesting, and strange, unexpected. I still don't know what the heck that guy was supposed to be, and what was with the snake venom? I understand the flare part, don't know about where he got the sword or the whole point of it, really. It was kind of fun, though. But then again, not much of a game in the game, is there? All you do is basically click the pages and let the story play out and just go with it. It's kind of fun, though. So, uh, that's it. Thanks very much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.